his life. Raw talk. Sip coffee and talk that real shit. Enjoy. You just don't want to eat. And I was forgetting to eat and I wasn't realizing because I had no taste, no smell. So I lost some weight from not eating like that. But other than that, like, it was like the flu. It was like the flu. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Because exactly. everybody say they got different things. One of my friends, he, had, he said he was so sick. He thought he was going to die. Then I, you know, you talk to somebody else and they say, well, I just had a body ache. Just talk to somebody else. They say, well, I, I felt sick. Everybody I talked to said the first couple days was, was the, the worst. worst. Right. So that's what's crazy to me. Because that is that is like how a cold, a bad yeah, cold yeah. is. Like, you feel like crap. And uh, But everybody said their main symptoms like with something different, you know what I mean? But the first couple days, like if you can get past the first couple days. Yeah, you're, you're good. You're good to go. Man, I'm glad you okay though right now. I'm yeah, glad you got I do over that. have a friend that got it and never got sick. All she said was every right. time she walked up and down the steps, she was out of breath. But she didn't have a runny nose, she didn't cough, she didn't, just nothing. Mm. No symptoms at all. But she tested positive because she has a 9 to 5 and normally at a job they want you testing normally when you're coming back to work. She went on vacation, she had to take a test to come back and she had it. And mm. she was not sick at all. Wow. So, and so I guess everybody's immune system is funny. And it's funny because this COVID thing, it like tested everybody's immune system. You get what I'm saying? Like, yeah. it was like, I'm like, yeah. you know what I mean? I'm like, oh my God. And I ain't gonna lie, I didn't get it, but I got sinuses. Mm. So, I was scared I was gonna get it. Okay. Because sometimes my sinuses are so bad to where it feel like a cold, but it's just sinus. Okay. So I'm like, if I get a sinus infection, I'm more prone to get it. I don't know if I'm correct <coughs> or not, but that's how I felt. I felt like, because I got sinuses, if I get sick, just, not severely sick, but just sick, you know, minor, you know what I mean? Yeah. Okay, if I get in contact with somebody with COVID, it's going down. So I was a little scared. I was I was extra paranoid because right, I know how right. I feel when I just got signed into it. talking about the uh, the Biggie documentary. Right. And I told you, I thought about you when uh, watching it. It's on Netflix. And when I seen it, I'm a Biggie fan. I didn't see that side of Biggie. Right. You know what I mean? Right. Like that was crazy to see his childhood friends and stuff like that. But what, what what made me think about you was when his mom took him to Jamaica every year. Yeah. And his uncle said a lot of his musical talents came from him being around Jamaicans and it was like they was rapping and stuff like that. So when you seen that, did you what what did you see, you know, anything that was uh similar in his life? Of then, course. Okay, of course. so tell us that. Once you go to Jamaica, it's just a different experience. Like, it's just, I, I can't explain it. So, when I saw that part of the, I never thought that he, the mom took him to, but it's a thing. You always got to take the kids to the heritage. If you don't take the kids, they going to say, you're the Dutty Yankee. You can't. <laughs> <laughs> He's a Dutty Yankee, you're what list, you don't you don't carry the kids to learn the heritage, to learn the roots, like it's a really big thing. And it's just a certain type of ambience and experience that you have to really just go to for yourself. Like once everyone goes to Jamaica, they never wanna go nowhere else. They always wanna go back, they always wanna visit. And the DJing thing, that's what it's called. 
Okay. So the Jamaican artists, they're rapping, but it's Jamaican, so it's like DJing. That's what they call it. Not a DJ like, er, er, no, mm -hmm. not like here. <laughs> they call it, their rapping is like DJing. So mm -hmm. I got that part when he went to Jamaica and he got the roots from his uncle. You know, they just playing music in the backyard, in the yard, playing dominoes. They playing like a beat and you just riding it. So it just, he got it from Jamaica most definitely. Like. Ain't that something? Yeah. Because we, when we look at Biggie, we're like, oh, he a lyricist. Oh, he, you know, the streets of New York and yada, yada, yada. But his foundation was New York. Yep. His foundation was Jamaica. And they even showed a clip of them doing what you're saying, DJing. Right. Where they just basically like talking to the beat, but they hear the beat. And it's crazy because it's one thing to say he got his roots from there, but it's another thing to say he got his roots from there. And Biggie dominated the lyrical exactly. skill. You know exactly. what I mean? Because they showed him when he was a kid and he was in front of a store, I believe, and he battled one of the rappers on the street and yeah. he destroyed him. Yeah. And I'm like, this is crazy. Cause they, <laughs> first, you know what I mean? So you would think that, you know, he learned that from the New York streets, but nah, he didn't. It was embedded in him from his yes, Jamaican yes. roots. That, that kind of blew my mind. Yeah. I'm like, wow. And I knew his mom, yeah. but you can hear him actually. Yeah. Is Jamaican, but I didn't know that he had experienced that Jamaican side of his family. Yeah, you know, and they showed his grandma, they showed his uncle, and so all that stuff is 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 is, is basically that wasn't Hollywood. That was real. What they showed. I'm uh, trying to think of something that would be fit to say why Jamaicans are so, but why he would be like the good battler that he was. So mm -hmm. Jamaicans, they don't back down from nothing. They always wanna stands a stance of nobody can't top me i'm the top so i guess that is just like you just gotta come with an approach you're not scared of nothing you're not afraid of nothing so he ain't back down you know it just in him to just i gotta conquer this i'm this i got it mm -hmm. kind of attitude okay so i guess that's why he just mash up everything and, I mean, he did though because he, you know what I'm saying. Like, I don't know. I mean, they they, they name you know when people name their top five rappers, they be like, oh, this one, that one, that one, that one, this one. But to me, Biggie definitely is in my top five. Of course. And Most if you definitely. listen, I listen to Biggie right now. He only came out with a couple albums, and of course, he did some songs on different stuff. But even now, when I listen to Biggie, he'll say a line, and I'm like, damn. Ain't nobody saying no lines like that no to more. This day. To this day. To this day. You know what I mean? His stuff's still relevant to what he's saying. So, I mean, he one of my favorite But I just, I was glad they brought that part of him. Because everybody give Puffy the credit. Yeah, you know, they do. They give, they do. you know, New York the credit. And that's fine. But if you got to start from somebody's, you know, younger period. And what yeah. made them the way they are. And that's why I like that part of Biggie. And then they, you know, his friends. They show, you know. It's different family, and you know, you know, and they always say, "Oh, Biggie sold drugs." He did this, this. So when they came with the Jamaican part, I'm like, "Oh, okay, I get it now." And he became a legend. I mean, yeah. he still is a legend. You know what I mean? To this day, so that's crazy. So you know them streets and yes, uh, yes. the whole Jamaican yes, side of that. Yes. You can relate to Biggie from that. Definitely from that aspect. That part of um, Brooklyn, though, it's mad Jamaican. And in that era, when he was growing up. Every time a, a Brooklyn, New Yorker heard an accent, uh -huh. they was just Jamaican, which is not true. They were from Trinidad, they were from Guyana, they were oh, from okay. Haiti, but it was just them damn Jamaican. Then it's just like they were from other places. So that part of Brooklyn, all the Caribbeans were. It was still a thing to be Caribbean in the right there in Brooklyn. So it was gotcha. still there, the, the heritage and everything. That's the whole little, that's the part of Jamaica, all the, that's the part of Brooklyn all the Jamaicans are. Mm. That street they was definitely talking about Fulton. What is it? Yeah. Is that that's supposed to be the grimy section? It is. It really? Is. That's where he was. He, they always talk it about is. Fulton with it. So it's still like that one because you know back then. It's not like that no more. No? Uh -huh. Where they just selling crack and. You know? Nah, it's not no? like that no what more. What is it like now? Because I haven't been to New York in a while. They try to build up most of the places, like even the hoodest of the hoods in Brooklyn. They'll try to call it some type of garden. And then they try to build up the community way different. It's okay. different. So it's better? It's, it's, it's not as. It try to be. It try to be. <laughs> It's still I Brooklyn. Brooklyn is Brooklyn. Mm -hmm. I mean, the Bronx is the Bronx. Like, 
the same thing here in, in Detroit. They trying to build it up, but I mean, I hate to say this, but niggas gonna be niggas. You know what I'm saying? I I try not to say those things. <laughs> well, I'm say I it really funny. do. Yeah, niggas gonna be niggas, man. You, yeah. You know, until that mindset change. Yeah, until that mindset change. You know what I mean? It, it's gonna be that way because they they're building up a lot of stuff in Detroit right now, and it looks nice. Yeah. But. The mentality is the same, so it's still litter, <laughs> it's still drug it's true, selling, it's still, it's you know, it's like, man, okay, that look nice, but it's almost like they building something so when suburban people pass through it, they'll say, oh, this is nice, and that's it. They're not looking at the everyday trouble that's going on, and eventually it's going to look like shit again.